Welcome to the Advanced Cardiac Life Support Chapter on Pulseless Electrical Activity. Pulseless electrical activity, also known as PEA, is the lack of palpable pulse or cardiac contraction, even with organized cardiac electrical activity. Even though the heart is producing organized electrical activity and the ECG displays a heart rhythm that should generate a pulse, no mechanical activity is produced. With PEA, there will be no contractions of the cardiac muscles. Any organized rhythm with a pulse is considered PEA, except the conditions of VF, VT, and asystole. PEA includes ideoventricular rhythms, ventricular escape rhythms, post-defibrillation ideoventricular rhythms, and Brady asystolic rhythms. PEA can be caused by many reversible causes which are represented by the H's and T's. Let's go over the H's now. Hypovolemia is decreased blood volume. Hypoxia is a decreased partial pressure of oxygen in the blood. Hydrogen ion buildup, known as acidosis, is an increase in the concentration of hydrogen ions in the blood. Hyper or hypokalemia is either an abnormally high or abnormally low potassium concentration in the blood, respectively. And the final and fifth H is hypothermia, which is defined by a core body temperature less than 35 degrees Celsius or 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Now let's look at the T's. Tension pneumothorax is when air leaks into the pleural space around the lung, causing the lung to collapse. Tamponade, also known as cardiac tamponade, is the compression of the heart produced by excess fluid surrounding the heart. Toxins can be poisonous substances that cause cardiac arrest. Thrombosis, as in pulmonary thrombosis, is a formation of a blood clot which blocks a blood vessel in the lungs. And the final T is for coronary thrombosis, which is a formation of a blood clot that blocks a blood vessel in the heart. Now, let's take a look at a relevant scenario. Imagine that you are a physician on duty, and you are called to the ER to attend to a patient who was involved in a motorcycle accident and is now unresponsive. First, assess the situation. Check the patient for responsiveness by tapping and shouting, Are you alright? Look at their chest for any movement. When you check the carotid pulse, you note that there is no pulse present. Call a code and get the code team in place. Now, start with interventions. If the patient has no pulse, immediately start compressions at a rate of 100 compressions per minute and allow the chest to fully recoil, following the cycle of 30 compressions to two breaths. Once the code team is in place, one person will be responsible for the compression and one for breaths using a bag, valve, mask, or BEVM. Next, attach a monitor to the patient and check for a shockable rhythm. If no shockable rhythm is present, then that means the patient is in PEA or asystole. Continue CPR for two minutes and obtain an IV or IO access. For management of the patient, you must initiate the cardiac arrest algorithm if the patient still has no pulse and does not respond to BLS. Once IV or IO access has been obtained, administer the following drugs to the patient. Epinephrine in a dose of one milligram via IO or IV access and repeat three to five minutes or you can give the patient vasopressin at a dosage of 40 units via IV or IO to replace a first or second dose of epinephrine. Remember to maintain an advanced airway and capnography if needed. Pause and check the patient for a shockable rhythm. If the heart is not shockable, then continue performing CPR for two minutes and try to determine and treat the reversible causes. To see the algorithm on the management of cardiac arrest due to PEA or asystole, which we will discuss in the next section, look at the left side of the chart included in this chapter. Keep in mind that to ensure the best outcome for PEA, it is vital for the patient to have uninterrupted high-quality CPR and to figure out the reversible causes as quickly as possible. This was the chapter on pulseless electrical activity. Please proceed to the next section of this course to learn more.